Asiam, siyap na siya sa ayasak ko na skwih. Iitin ito na kumas ko yan. Salam sa siya wala na kay Palano, kay Ubaltimoto, kuskilap sa kukinas, imit na kuskwihiti i. Sa saan sa mga kumas ko yan, islik ko na siya talo, ihilap talo. Sa saan sa nito sa walang siya talo, ihilap talo. For each eat, stay with ten, to need to need to come up with the mustard. I said the host, you have to see it, see it at all. Just want to say thank you. Thank you to Handel. Thank you to the organizers of this symposium. I would really like to welcome all of you here at Stay with Ten at UBC on the traditional ancestral unceded territory of the Huntamano-speaking Western people. And maybe not too many of you know our language continuum. Range from Point Grey here, up South Sound to Harvey Creek, through the mountains, across, up Indian Arm, down Indian Arm, into Port Moody, Quick Whitlam, KC, then up to Quantum, Fort Lyman, and then back down to Stowathan and back. And that was our language continuum prior to the colonial, uh, how would you say, introduction, the colonial introduction of the diseases that killed off many, many of our people and allowed our villages to be occupied by new immigrants, including our neighbors around us. And that's uh, what I call pre-Columbian history. And that's some of our, our things that we speak of at all times. Our people lived on this delta since the last ice age, about 10,000 years ago, and moved down as the delta was being formed. When these islands finally became a peninsula, we moved downwards. And today we are in our, uh, our village of Kumasquim, which has been occupied continuously for 4,000 years which goes back to the words of my mother and my grandparents. We are the people that have always been here. We never came from anywhere else. We have no stories of transportation. We have no stories of belonging anywhere else. This has always been where we have been. And this symposium is about I don't know more. And I don't know more is to indigenize the population or educate the population which some like to call the great unwashed mass that came ashore on those ships. I come from a community that has never been idle. My name is Aisha. And that's a name that I carry that was passed on to me from my great <coughs> uncle. And if you look in the Stalo Atlas, you will find his name in there. You will find many names of Muslim people that have been fighting the inequities, the great British Empire. British hierarchical mindset, where if we call, we call you a human being, we can treat you in any way we wish, and we don't have to recognize you. And we don't un understand oral history in the way it's, it, it, the way it's carried out. Our courts call that hearsay evidence. However, we give credence to amateur 
anthropologists, ethnographers, who interviewed one or two people and it goes down in history as fact. And that is something that we have been working on and trying to work it out. However, the social hierarchy that is part of the makeup of Canada that doesn't believe Aboriginals are human beings, so they create the, the Indian Act to control the people of the land, to, to exclude them from social activity, to exclude them from economic endeavor, and social isolate, socially isolate everyone from the new immigrants that claim territory and claim under the British flag. Claim territory and occupy. Our community is the home of the Garen case. The Garen case versus Regina, Saskatchewan. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, something that uh, is ignored throughout all of the court cases. Over and over and over, we have to identify ourselves, whereas the British Crown doesn't have to under this system. And it's a system that is a social hierarchical system, totally embedded in our minds, because we still stand up and sing God Save the Queen and rejoice when she arrives here. Rejoice to the British Crown that is willing and happy to occupy territory without any compensation or agreement. Our home is also the home of the Sparrow case. Landmark case, the top 10, in the top 10 cases of the world for indigenous people. And that helps to identify Aboriginal rights and titles. And that is something that we have to prove in the courts over and over and over and over again. The courts disregard precedents when it's Aboriginal precedents, but carry with precedents that are white. And that's something that's admitted in our society. And we're here as Muslim people trying to indigenize the population here in UBC. In the true history of Canada and England and France and how our people are the greatest contributors to this land, to this country, to this population. We are the greatest contributors to Canada. However, when you look in the history books, you will find nothing in there. Nothing of great significance. We're celebrating many, many schools in the city, 100 year celebration, 100 year celebration for close, uh, excuse me, there's two of them that I'm aware of, but uh, Laura Secord.
when we're doing things in other people's territories, we recognize who they are and recognize and thank them for having us as guests in their, in their territory. And many, many of the academy don't really care about that. And that's something that when you don't care about that, you don't care about real history or the truth of, of Canada's history. But again, I will stop there or I'm going to get hooked off the stage. <laughs> but I want to say again on behalf of the Hunt Committee, speaking with your people, I welcome here today at Stuyvesant Hall at UBC on the traditional, ancestral, unceded territory of the Hunt Committee, speaking with your people. And I raise my hands and say, I said, 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 I said